The game of golf has long been a recreational favorite for many in Georgia. In fact, every April, masses descend on the Augusta area to see who will conquer the course at the Masters Tournament. Yet, for one organization, the sport of golf has helped to drive an entire population into economic stability. The East Lake Golf Club opened in 1904. With its lush surroundings accented by a natural lake, the club was primarily geared toward the affluent. Golfing legends like Bobby Jones, Charlie Yates, and Arnold Palmer have all graced the greens of East Lake. In 1998, the club would host the Professional Golf Association's Tour Championship and has been the home of the event since 2005. Luminaries like Phil Mickelson, Tiger Woods, Bill Haas, and Jordan Spieth would claim victory over the years. The Tour Championship has raised millions to support the mission of the East Lake Foundation. Someone who works closely with the PGA and a number of partner organizations is Eastlake Foundation President and CEO Daniel Shoy Jr. Steeped in the purpose of the foundation's mission, Shoy will tell you finding a path to his own purpose was never a straight line, as you'll see in today's executive profiles. Your parents are first generation Americans, correct? They, I, I'm actually first. Generation. You're first generation. That's right. They came here from? Yeah, from Munster at a tiny country in the Caribbean. Right. Uh, and also a little bit of family from Trinidad and other places in the Caribbean region. But I'm the youngest of four siblings. According to my older siblings, we settled at first in a one bedroom apartment near Central Park and then ultimately moved to Mount Vernon, uh, which is where I went to high school. Danny, as a kid, what were some of the things <laughs> you were sort of taught to do that helped instill you, who you are today? So I, w I would definitely say the value of education and being a scholar was definitely enforced. So when you are first-gen American and your parents are immigrants, they live vicariously through you. So there was this expectation of being a high achiever. So what brought you to Atlanta? Yeah. So Emory. Emory University brought me to Atlanta. Yeah. I started out at Hampton University in Hampton, Virginia. Um, I went there my freshman year. I had a mixed experience and was looking for something a little different. And my mom made a deal with me. And she said, you get to pick the city, I get to pick the school. And I'd heard about Atlanta being this uh, rising mecca uh, for young black scholars and professionals. My mom did a little bit of checking around. This is pre-internet, really, and uh, found Emory. The academic experience, because you ended up, your career takes you into community service That's right. as such. That's right. What were the building blocks that took you down that path? Yeah. A lot of the classmates in Emory were all going private sector, but yeah. you were going in a different direction. Yeah. What was going on there? Yeah. My fraternity, Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated, at Emory, uh, I'd say was really the beginning of a turning point for me, where I began to learn the value of service beyond myself. Um, I'd also say beyond the Emory community, and it was the single most I'd say important factor in me learning about the city of Atlanta and a lot of the inequities across the city. So when I, I was getting ready to get out of Emory, my mom was very upset with me that after all that time and money to go to Emory that her son was not gonna be the world's next best pediatrician. Right. And so I learned about uh, this amazing program called Eco Watch through the Atla of the Atlanta Outward Bound Center. Um, did 10 months uh, and during that time really fell in love with education by volunteering at a local elementary school in Decatur City Schools. Mm -hmm. um, through that, I learned about Hands on Atlanta and uh, became an AmeriCorps member, and that was a 10-month program. I took a staff position with Hands on Atlanta to lead its AmeriCorps program. From there, I learned about the Blank, Arthur and Blank Family Foundation, which is where I worked for almost a decade. And through my uh, experience at the Blank Foundation, I learned about the Eastlake community and the Eastlake Foundation. Uh, which is where I am today. It's one of the great nonprofit success stories in this town, <laughs> for sure. Uh, Mr. Cousins had this vision, and That's the right. vision has become realized. And now you're at a point where, you, you talk a little bit about where yeah. Eastlake is today. To understand where the foundation is now is to understand where it started. And if I tell you really quickly, just by the statistics, uh, the crime rate in Eastlake was 18 times higher than the national average. 14% uh, employment, that's employment, not unemployment. 60% uh, of the adults that lived in the East Lake Meadows housing development relied on public assistance. Um, a $35 million a year drug trade, and most sobering was the fact that less than 10% of the fifth graders at the old Drew Elementary School were able to meet or exceed the state standard, the CRCT, uh, in math. Fast forward 22 years later, uh, East Lake now being home to a mixed income 
development called uh, the villages at East Lake. Right. We've seen crime, violent crime, go down dramatically. East Lake is one of the safest neighborhoods in the city. Uh, and I would say to you, most dramatically are the outcomes that we see for young people. Oh, yeah. So once upon a time, if you lived in East Lake, you were more likely to be victim of a violent crime uh, than you were to graduate high school. Uh, we have a cradle of college education pipeline. Drew Charter School serves as the anchor for that. And not just in East Lake. Almost a decade ago, Tom Cousins and two other philanthropists uh, got together and founded a new national organization called Purpose Built Communities. So the East Lake model for community redevelopment has been codified by Purpose Built Communities. And these East Lake like initiatives are happening in 17 other neighborhoods scattered all across the country in places like New Orleans, uh, Orlando, as far west as Oakland, California, and many other places. I'd also say to you that Purpose Built Schools, a spinoff of that, is replicating the success of Drew Charter School through a innovative, long partnership with Atlanta Public Schools to turn around some of their lowest performing schools in the Carver Cluster in Atlanta. Where are you running towards and what's yeah. still left to do as yeah to grow the foundation and to grow the community. We are adding more affordable housing uh, in East Lake. So we've seen property values rise in East Lake and all the great outcomes that I mentioned to you, uh, but we never intended for East Lake to be unattainable or unaffordable. Clearly an important piece of the success of the East Lake Foundation is your partnership with the PGA Tour and the Tour Championship. Yes. That's a huge fundraiser for you. It is one of three big golf fundraising events uh, and all three of them combined, the Tour Championship, and the two others uh, bring us about 53% of our revenue, which means that we have to raise the other 47% of our revenue. And Atlanta has certainly been a very generous city, uh, and we need for Atlanta to continue to be generous, not just to support the work that we're doing in East Lake and uh, now through Purpose Built Communities, a national organization replicating this model, uh, but to also be able to be a model for this work in Grove Park on the west side of Atlanta, uh, in the Thomasville community, but also in the 16 other places that Purpose Built Communities is replicating the East Lake Foundation's community redevelopment model of mixed income housing, cradle of college education, community wellness, all led by a community quarterback. The 2017 Tour Championship raised more than $2 million for the East Lake Foundation. And since it first hosted the event in 1998, a total of $26 million has been invested in local nonprofits.